Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here at FE Made Easy. My videos are shorter than what you are used to. And this is because I am working on another project that hopefully I will be able to share with you very soon. Before I move on with the example that I have for you today, I would like to welcome those who are new to my channel. And just a quick reminder, if you are interested in evaluating your education in the United States of America, I have a quick guide, a step-by-step -step guide that's going to help you do just that. You're going to find the link underneath this video. Another guide that I have put together for you, it's called Integral Calculus. And if you want standard integral examples with solutions, you're going to find the link to that guide as well underneath this video. And now let's move on with the example for today. For the triangle shown below, the value of tangent of theta plus cotangent of theta equals two. This one, if you know or are very familiar with the trigonometric formulas for sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, this is a very simple problem. But I'm going to assume that you've been out of school for a long time and maybe you need a little bit of introduction to this problem. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. First of all, let's recognize that this is a right triangle, meaning that it has a 90 degree angle. And the 90 degree angle is right here. And let's bring back the formulas for sine, cosine. These are very popular. You've probably used them quite a lot. So sine, theta, and I'm going to write just the general rule for sine, which says that sine equals to the opposite. over hypotenusa. In our case, this is, so it's the opposite of this angle theta, which is one divided by hypotenusa in our case is square root of three. And now let's go to cosine. We're gonna bring back cosine as well of theta equals two. And now cosine, is the adjacent and is the adjacent side of the triangle. So it's the adjacent side to the angle, theta. So adjacent over hypotenusa. And this is going to be square root of two divided by square root of three. Okay, these are the two formulas that are used a lot throughout trigonometry. Now, there are two other formulas in trigonometry, and it's tangent and cotangent. And I'm going to write tangent next here, tangent of theta equals 2. And then we're going to have cotangent of theta equals 2. And I'm writing it along tangent along the sine for a reason and then cotangent along cosine for a reason because they're kind of similar or, or they have some similarity. So for tangent of theta in this triangle is going to be opposite. So we're going to have the similar to the sine opposite. over, and instead of hypotenusa, we have over adjacent. Okay. And then for cotangent, the formula is adjacent, right? Similar to cosine over opposite. So there are some similarities. If you look closely to it, it's actually not that tough to memorize it. I had a wonderful teacher in math, and it just so it happens that I know these formulas by heart since a long time ago. And But for you, I just want you to remember that 
Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and then cotangent comes, the opposite of that is adjacent over opposite. So these are easy to remember. But the good part, another good news, is that you don't even have to remember this because they are given in the FE handbook. So I'm sorry if I made you memorize something that you don't really need to memorize. But for me, these are just kind of simple things that come in handy when you need them. So I'm going to show you where in the FE handbook you can find this. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and move on here. And I'm going to write the formula for tangent opposite over adjacent. So what is the opposite is one and then adjacent is square root of two. And then for cotangent, we have adjacent square root of two divided by the opposite, which is one. Wonderful. And, you know, I'm going to go quickly to the FE handbook. And of course, I have the page already here because I looked into this and trying to see if FE Handbook provides it or not. And so you have it in math, but you don't have to look for it. You can just say trigonometry and it's going to get you to this page. So that being said, we have the formula for sine, which is the opposite over hypotenusa R. Cosine is adjacent. And when you say opposite and adjacent, I'm going to just go all the way, make sure that you understand um, what this means. So we talk about the opposite of the angle theta. Opposite of angle theta is this side. And then adjacent to angle theta is this side, x. So when we talk about cosine of theta is the adjacent x over hypotenusa r. And then here are the formulas for tangent, which is the opposite over adjacent, so y over x, and then cotangent is the opposite of that, x over y. And here, if you need, there are two more formulas if you ever find them in the FE exam, just so you know they are available here. Anyway, now that you know you have these formulas available. Let's go back to our problem and try to solve tangent of theta plus cotangent of theta. So tangent theta plus cotangent theta equals two. Now tangent of theta, we already found that out, is one over square root of two plus cotangent of theta is square root of two over one. And if you remember the old math, old days of math, how do we solve that? We're gonna find the common denominator, square root of two divided by square root of two. Here we have one. And then square root of two divided by one. Here we're gonna multiply it by square root of two. And then one multiplied by one is one plus square root of two multiplied by square root of two is two. And this gives us the result of three divided by square root of two. And this is our correct answer. Three over square root of two gives us, takes us to number three. And that is it that I had for you today. A, a simple problem if you know where to look or if you know what cotangent, what tangent is. And if you don't know, that is fine. You have the FE handbook, which provides you with these formulas. You don't have to memorize anything if you don't need to, because there's a lot of things to learn anyway. So I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have another problem that is giving you troubles and you want me to solve it for you, you can email it to femadeeasy at gmail.com. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe because this helps put this channel in front of more people just like you. Don't forget, in order to become good in solving FE problems, you have to make sure you solve as many examples as you can. Keep up the good work on doing this, and I will see you next week.